Welcome to Electron Online. Now we're going to take the same circuit we had on the previous video and find the charges and the voltages across each of the capacitors of that particular circuit. Remember in the previous video we took the circuit and we found the equivalent capacitance which happened to be 5 microfarads. So how do we find the charge on each of the capacitors and the voltage across each of the capacitors? Well, if you start with the circuit right here, assuming we take a 10 volt battery and put it across our circuit, then first what we need to do is find the equivalent capacitance first, because then what we can do is follow, use the following equation where the capacitance by definition is equal to the charge on the capacitor divided by the voltage across the capacitor. So when we take the total capacitance and the total charge, we can then find the total charge, Q total, by taking the total capacitance and multiplying times the voltage. In this case, that's the 5 microfarads, multiply times 10 volts, and we see that it's 50 microcoulombs for the total charge on the equivalent capacitance. So what that means is if we replace this entire circuit by a single equivalent capacitor, the total charge on this capacitor would be 50 microcoulombs. So we can say here that this would be 50 microcoulombs, and the voltage across this equivalent capacitance would of course be the entire 10 volts. Now what happens when we then walk backwards to the previous intermediate result that we've got? And now we have this 50, micro 50 microcoulombs spread over these three capacitors in series. But we have to remember when capacitors are in series, the charge on each capacitor is equal, to the is equal to each other, plus it's equal to the total capacitance, which means that this 50 microcoulombs will be across, or will be on this capacitor, on this capacitor, and on this capacitor, because when they're in series, the charges are the same. So we have 50 microcoulombs on this capacitor, 50 microcoulombs on this, and 50 microcoulombs on this capacitor. Now what will be the voltage across each of these three capacitors? Again, these are the equivalent capacitors of this one, these three, and this one in the original circuit. So again, to find the voltage across a capacitor, we use the equation again over here, but now we're going to solve this equation for the voltage. Voltage, therefore, is equal to the charge divided by the capacitance. In this case, we can say that the voltage across the first capacitor, so let's call it V1, is equal to the charge, 50 microcoulombs, divided by the 10 microfarads, which means there's 5 volts across this first capacitor. So from there to there, we can say we have 5 volts across this capacitor. 5 volts and we can mark it like this. How about the second equivalent capacitor? What is the voltage across it? V2 is equal to 50 microcoulombs divided by 20 microfarads, which is 2.5 volts, which means across this equivalent capacitor, we have a total of 2.5 volts. And we can mark it like that. And finally, you can see now on the third one, since we have the same equivalent capacitance, V3 would be equal to 50 microcoulombs divided by 20 microfarads, which is 2.5 volts again. So this capacitor here has a total of 2.5 volts across it. And then when we go to the circuit above here, you can see that because this is the same capacitor as here, this is the equivalent capacitor of those three, and this is the equivalent capacitor of those two. We can then say there is five volts across this capacitor, two and a half volts across this capacitor, and two and a half volts across this capacitor. So we can again mark it like this, five volts across this capacitor, 2.5 volts across these three capacitors, and 2.5 volts across these two capacitors, like that. What about the charge on each of these capacitors now? Well, for the first one, it's easy because this is exactly the same as over here. So we know that this capacitor also has 50 microcoulombs of charge. Now let's go over to this one because that's a little bit easier. Here we have 50 microcoulombs across this equivalent capacitor, but it's really representative of these two capacitors. Now they're equal in size. Since they're equal in size and they're in parallel, that means each of them will carry half the charge. 25 microcoulombs will be across this capacitor and 25 
microcoulombs will be across that capacitor. Added together, you have the 50 microcoulombs. What about this one? Well, here, hmm, we have three capacitors, one that's bigger, two that are smaller, and they're the same. Now, going back over here, notice that the charge on each capacitor is equal to the capacitance times the voltage across it. Okay, so if we have two and a half volts across each of these three capacitors, and we know the capacitance of each of the capacitors, we can then find the charge in each capacitor. We can say that the charge Q, oh, I'll use my black pen, here it is. We can say that, uh, let's call this 1, 2, and 3 for the three capacitors in this particular branch. We can say that for capacitor 1, the charge Q is equal to, using the equation, the capacitance times the voltage, that would be C1 times the voltage, which in this case would be 5 microfarads times 2.5 volts, which means that this will be 12.5 microcoulombs. On the second capacitor, we can say that the charge Q is equal to C2 times V, which is equal to 10 microfarads times 2.5 volts, which is 25 microcoulombs. And then on the third capacitor, since it's the same size as the first capacitor, you would expect it to have the same charge. So Q would be equal to C3 times V, which is 5 microfarads times 2.5 volts, or 12.5 microcoulombs. It is imperative that all three combined add up to the full 50 microcoulombs. And sure enough, 12.5 plus 25 plus 12.5 do add up to 50 microcoulombs, so we can see that this has a charge of 12.5 microcoulombs, 25 microcoulombs, and 12.5 microcoulombs. So here's a nice example of, to show you how to find the charge on each of the capacitors and the voltage across each capacitor in a circuit like this. Remember, first always find the equivalent capacitance, then find the total charge, and then you work backwards to the diagrams to attribute the charges to each of the capacitors one step at a time like that. And that's how it's done.